Welcome back to another episode of Free Me From OCD. I'm your host, Dr. Vicki Rackner, and today we have an important topic to discuss, disappointment. We all face disappointment at some point in our lives, and it can be challenging to manage those feelings. But fear not, because today we're going to dive deep into what disappointment is and explore strategies for effectively managing it. Welcome to the Free Me From OCD podcast. If you or someone you love has OCD, you know that OCD can hold you hostage. OCD can get in the driver's seat of your life. Here you'll find the information, tips, and tools to put you back in the driver's seat of your life. I'm Dr. Vicki Rackner, your host. I call on my experience as a mother of a son diagnosed with OCD when he was in college, physician, and life coach to help you evolve into the best and highest version of yourself. Let's dive into today's episode. All right, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news first. Disappointment is an inherent part of the human experience, and disappointment can be a painful feeling. Think of feelings as the warning lights on a car dashboard. They bring important information that you would want to know about. So what does the disappointed warning light communicate? Well, you have desires and hopes and dreams. You've got expectations about how others should behave or how opportunities should unfold. Disappointment tells you that you have unmet expectations, unrealized dreams, or unexpected outcomes. Disappointment is the tax you pay on the desire to want more and have more and be more. The only way that disappointment will disappear is to give up on the desire for a better future. Here is the good news. Disappointment does not need to lead to suffering. In fact, it can be your teacher that will help you move closer to the things that you want. Let's kick off the conversation about disappointment with a real everyday story from my own life. I love it when my house is clean. It gives me a sense of peace. However, cleaning is not one of my favorite activities. Recently, I decided to hire somebody to come in and do a deep cleaning of the house. Mary, the house cleaner, and I made a plan. She would come in and clean during the two days I was out of town speaking. I imagined how wonderful it would be to arrive home and walk into a house that sparkled. I arrived home from my business travels late in the evening. I walked in the door, turned on the lights, and looked around. The only surface that sparkled was the stovetop. I felt that familiar sense of disappointment. For me, it feels like the air is leaving a balloon. I feel let down. I feel a heaviness. It's like a teeny weeny part of me dies, the death of a dream. Everyone experiences their feelings differently. Some people love the thrill of a roller coaster and others refuse to get on the ride. How spicy do you like your Thai or Indian food? I personally find disappointment to be very difficult to navigate. When I was a child and I did not meet my parents' expectations, the very worst punishment my parents would deliver was to say to me, I'm so disappointed in you. These words hurt more than the most severe spanking I ever got. And back then, spanking was an acceptable practice. As you might imagine, I had a collection of ways I used to avoid the sting of disappointment. I could try to talk myself out of disappointment using reason. So, for example, the conversation I could have with myself when I saw that my house didn't sparkle could go something like this. Come on, there are real problems in the world and my house not sparkling is not at the top of the list. When I try to talk myself out of disappointment, it usually doesn't work very well. I was telling myself that what I wanted was not valid. Reasoning away something that you want is like submerging a beach ball underwater. When you let go, it keeps popping up and sometimes with even greater force than if it were just floating in the water. Some people numb their feelings with food or alcohol or binge watching Netflix or shopping. 
Once the ice cream is gone or the season series is over, the feeling returns. Some people decide that they're just going to settle with the way things are. If they don't reach for something they may or may not achieve, they can avoid disappointment. Some people try to skip over the feeling of disappointment by reacting. They spring into action. I could imagine what I'll say to the house cleaner. I think about what I'll demand. These knee-jerk reactions rarely help me get what I want. Maybe you skip the disappointing circumstances and go directly to what it means about you. What's wrong with me that I never get what I want? All of these tactics are ways to avoid feeling the disappointment. It's completely understandable that you would want to avoid an unpleasant feeling. But resisting or denying or ignoring or reacting to disappointment lead to their own problems. Imagine somebody knocks on your door and you see it's a neighbor you try to avoid. Maybe you ignore the doorbell. Maybe you open the door and say, sorry, I don't have time for you right now. Maybe you say, please leave and never come back. You never give the neighbor a chance to tell you why they're there. Maybe the neighbor is there to tell you something that you'd want to know. Your garage door is open. They know you want to adopt a dog and their friend is rehoming theirs. They're giving you the heads up that they're putting their house up for sale because you had spoken with them about buying the house for your parents. Many people treat disappointment like that unwanted neighbor. They try to ignore it and hope it goes away. Essentially, I'm telling my disappointment, I don't want you here. There's no reason for you to be here. Get out. Experience has taught me that the most effective way of managing disappointment is to invite disappointment in. You can say proverbially, oh, it's you, disappointment. Come on in and let's sit down and have a chat. What are you here to tell me? Sometimes you get disappointed about little things. Trader Joe's discontinued one of your favorite items. Your flight was delayed. Your team lost a game. Sometimes it's about big things. You didn't get the expected promotion. A friend accidentally shared your secret. A plan was canceled because of weather. Sometimes it's about really big things. Your marriage ended. Your parents didn't live forever as you always imagined they would. Someone you love faces health challenges. Here's another way to think about disappointment. Imagine the Grand Canyon, the wonder of nature carved by the Colorado River. Imagine that your hopes and dreams and expectations are on one side of the Colorado River and your current reality is on the other side. Disappointment spans the gap between your expectations and your reality. The greater the gap, the more intense the disappointment. By the way, disappointment and guilt are cousins. Guilt is the feeling you get when there's a gap between the person you want to be and the person you are in any given moment. Disappointment will not kill you, although sometimes it feels like it will. It's the attempt to avoid feeling disappointment that leads to the biggest problems. So here are some steps for managing disappointment. First, recognize disappointment. Where do you feel it in your body? What are some clues that you might be disappointed? Second, feel the disappointment. Just let it in and let it be. If you find yourself resisting disappointment, say, oh, how human of me. Third, set aside time for disappointment. You can literally set a timer for three or four minutes just to sit and feel the disappointment. Four, find out what the disappointment is communicating. How would you describe the gap between your expectations and reality? Please be kind to yourself and curious. Avoid judgment. Don't beat up on yourself. And fifth, you can explore what you could do differently next time to narrow the gap. You have two choices to close the disappointment gap. First, you could change your dreams and expectations. Let's say I have a dream of playing professional basketball. 
At my age and height, this is simply not going to happen. It may be that I need to mourn the loss of my dream. I could also look into ways of reinventing my dreams. Can I find somebody like me doing the things I want to do? A brief Google search brought up an article about Eddie Birrer. The 70-year-old Gonzaga University accounting professor plays full-court basketball at least three days a week with younger players. He said, I sometimes ask if anyone knows CPR before the game begins. Basketball is not considered a lifetime sport. It's rare for many people to play regularly and consistently in their 50s, much less 60s or 70s. Beerer doesn't care. He says, I just enjoy the game. Second, think about what you can think or say or do next time to get what you want. In the example I shared about my house, I want to hold on to the expectation that my house can sparkle. I've seen it sparkle before. Then I need to ask the question, why didn't my house sparkle after Mary's cleaning? Some things are out of my control. Mary told me on the day I was to arrive home that her daughter got sick, so she couldn't spend as much time as she wanted. There's nothing I can do about that. It's outside of my control. However, as I reviewed my conversations with Mary, I had to wonder how well had I communicated my expectations. I never actually said, Mary, please take your time and do a thorough job, even if it means that you can't do all of the house. Maybe Mary is not the right person for me. Maybe she just doesn't know how to make things sparkle. I may need to go through a number of people before I find one who will reliably be there and do the job I want. The gift of disappointment is that I have the chance to explore my expectations and figure out what I could learn. All of this began with my willingness to feel my disappointment. Over time, you're going to get better at managing disappointment. Begin with situations that don't have a high emotional charge for you. As you practice, you will become more skilled. My son is a power lifter. He can deadlift over 500 pounds. This means that he can reach down and pick up a bar loaded with 500 pounds. His goal is to deadlift 600 pounds. But my son has a protocol for getting stronger and putting more weight on the bar. My house not sparkling might be a 30 pound disappointment. Right now, I want to address the 600 pound disappointment, the disappointment parents face when they realize that their child's brain is not normal. And I just put air quotes around normal. Your child might carry the diagnosis of OCD or ADHD or autism or sensory processing issues. Maybe you don't even have a label yet, but you know your child is outside of the box. Now, do you remember when you first held your child? You might have looked at this precious being and imagined how his or her life might unfold. My guess is that you imagined your child would be extraordinary and stand out, be a world leader, cure cancer, be a music prodigy. That was balanced by the desire for your child to fit in in a world that reveres people whose behaviors fall within strict neurotypical standards. You want your child to have a normal brain. Now, what happens when you compare this vision of your child when your child was first in your arms to the child you have today, especially when your child is neurodivergent in some way? Disappointment is the gap between the child you imagine and the child you have. As a parent, my guess is that you'd like to embrace and celebrate the amazing person that your child is. However, trying to deny this gap can drain your energy. It can show up in the way you parent. It keeps you from celebrating the person your child is. So, if this even sounds vaguely familiar, I invite you into an exercise. Some parents go through the ritual of mourning the loss of their envisioned child. I know a parent who even had a funeral 
dug a hole and planted a tree. Sometimes this means releasing the dreams you had for your child. I remember somebody telling me that his dad always wanted him to go to Harvard Law School. And he went and sent the diploma to his dad saying, here you go, dad, this is for you. Now I'm gonna live my own life. What would happen if you were willing to feel that disappointment for maybe 10 minutes? You could do this privately. You could allow yourself to feel bad and maybe even go through some kind of ritual. Then you are able to place a new vision about your child where that old vision used to be. So there you go. Now you have a better understanding about what disappointment is and what you can do to harness disappointment as your teacher and manage it more effectively. We talked about what you do when you feel disappointed. In our next episode, we're gonna be talking about how you can be an emotional coach for your kids when your child is disappointed. We'll also talk about what happens when you are disappointed in somebody else or somebody tells you that they are disappointed in you. Thank you so much for stopping by and investing your time and energy in learning how you can be the voice of hope for your child learning how to manage OCD. See you in the next podcast episode.